Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, was the Ouija board the problem or is the problem the intention of the person whose fingers are on the planchette? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Share those real ghost stories with us anytime, 855-853-4802. You can write them in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You can become a premium subscriber. You will have no commercials. You will get all the advanced episodes, and you can listen to every episode in the archive, which is like 4,000 and some. So you can sign up through Apple Podcasts. You can sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes, Kathy Gordon here today. And this one, when I read this story earlier, it kind of gave me something to think about. It's like, is it the Ouija board or could it be someone's evil intention? And they've okay. got the fingers I on think, their I fingers think we can the make this the shortest episode ever. Is it the Ouija board? Yes. Okay, next episode. If you, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, don't you think it could be like, like I've always thought, you know, with a Ouija board, We've got our fingers on there, and you could kind of direct it. Like, what's the name of the spirit with us? And you want it to be Bob. It's like, B. Because kinda... Bob was always my go-to answer on the Ouija board. It, it, it always answered me, Bob. Really? And I just randomly yep. said Bob. No, it, that hmm. did. It always did. It would say Bob. And I knew I was going to marry some bo- guy named Bob, but I didn't. He ended yeah, up but being his, my father-in-law. I was going to say, but your husband's yeah. father's <laughs> name was Bob. Yeah. So everything began and ended with Bob. That's right. And then I had a cat named Bob. But it just makes me think, when I when I read this story, I was like, you know, if someone's got some evil in them, can they kind of make that come out of the Ouija board? Well, so it's not just so. moving the planchette. It's kind of like an evil intent. So here's the story. Y'all can decide okay. for yourselves. It says, hey, everyone, this is actually my second story I've written in. So without further ado, let's begin with the scariest story of my life. And of Ooh. course, the names are changed to protect those involved. I read that kind of like a police detective. I know. Thanks. Well, who used to do that? It was kind what, of dragnet Dragnet, yeah. yeah. Okay. So back in 2009, I was a sophomore in high school, and I was currently dating this girl I'd been with for a few years at that point. One day I was with her and three of her friends messing around at her house, just hanging out. A fourth friend called, Ashley, who was not invited, apparently became jealous for whatever reason and texted everyone there except myself a bunch of rude things and essentially said she was not friends with any of them anymore, especially my girlfriend. I tried to read that in an Ashley sort of aggressive way. The consensus, truthfully, was that Ashley was a bit overwhelmingly toxic and just a bad vibe to be around for many, many reasons. This would later change, however. I don't remember much from the rest of that night except my girlfriend in particular was upset and crying about the whole thing. We said our goodbyes for the night and I went home. The next morning would have been a Saturday as I woke up and did not go to church, which I normally did on Sundays. Prior to Saturday, me and my girlfriend had planned on hanging out for the day after she did her chores and got permission from her father. So I spent a good few hours in the morning simply awaiting a text saying I could come over to hang out. I eventually got a text, except it did not say what I had expected it to say. Back then, when a very long text was sent to your phone, it would tell you how many pages long it was. And if it was big enough to, and if it was big enough became an MMS message that had to be manually downloaded and opened. I received a 12-page long text. I'd be lying if I said my heart didn't drop in my mind. I had imagined she was breaking up with me and wrote a long message explaining why, which in hindsight would have been completely random. Instead, I got an even more disturbing message. For 12 pages, the words, and this is in caps, I am burning were said over and over in all caps for 12 pages. Okay, I te- Run the, okay you said, I am burning? Uh-huh. 
like hot. I am burning and okay. burning up. Just I am burning. That's all it says for twelve pages. So he must have had to download it on his phone and then Creepy. open it. <laughs> Very. Um, I texted my girlfriend back asking what was going on and got no reply. I continued on and on until she finally texted back. Hey, babe, what's wrong? Why are you texting me so much about messages? So I explained the situation and she told me she had no such messages on her end of the phone and had not even been awake to do so because she'd been asleep. In fact, her dad woke her up because she was muttering in her sleep something about a fire which was weird to hear. The connection just seemed too obvious, and yet her side of the text was missing as her phone had not recorded sending any such message, even though my phone received it from her phone. So something was wrong. Mm -hmm. We ended up hanging out and not much happened. Went home that night again and went to sleep. That night, I had a nightmare. In my nightmare, I was in my bed on my back, Looking towards my feet at the foot of my bed, there was a figure all in black with a scythe like the Grim Reaper has. He raised it up and swung down on me. The moment it happened, my mom came in, opened the door, and told me to wake up for church. So I was lying there on my belly, which was opposite to the dream, and my face was sideways on my pillow. I kept thinking, wow, what a creepy dream. And then I leaned up, and felt part of the pillow sticking to my face. I went to push the pillow down onto the bed off my face, thinking I drooled in my sleep, and I put my hand down, and what was a big blood stain on my pillow? My nose had bled that night all over the pillow, covering half my face in blood as I slept. The dream, the blood, it was too big of a coincidence. And with everything else, something was just very off. That would be a really weird way to start the day. To yeah. wake up and there's blood all over your pillow. Well, Grim Reaper. Yeah. You know. Got to go to church. That same day, my girlfriend texted me. And it said, quote, I am going to a Catholic church and I am being baptized and blessed and will be cleansed of demons and whatever else. That was a very, very, very random text for her to, t- for, for her to text me. She had already been baptized and was Christian. So I asked why this was all being done, and this is what she told me hours later after the ceremonies were done. The night we hung out with my friend and Ashley wasn't invited, she hung out with her other friends instead. That night, they got a Ouija board out and began a seance. During the seance, Ashley apparently made contact with a spirit claiming to be an old lady. It was then revealed that she was a witch from the colonial era. Ashley then told this spirit to make my girlfriend's life a living hell. After all was said and done that Sunday morning, Ashley texted my girlfriend telling her what she had done and that she was sorry for everything and wanted to be friends again. (laughs) No, absolutely not. Well, I think what we used to say with was with friends like you who needs needs enemies, enemies, right? Right. Oh, so then it says she wanted to be friends again, which did end up happening for a short while. After this incident, it did seem things fell apart slowly. We stopped dating. People died in her family and mine, and many other personal things happened to her. This has made me wonder about whether or not the entity contacted was ever truly vanquished or whatever. In the years since, I do have nightmares of an old demon lady which forces me to say the name of Jesus to get her to go away. Is it the same entity again? I do not know. What I do know is people say Ouija boards are harmless, but that logic ignores the intention of a person and the existence of evil we cannot see. A concrete slab and chalk can be used to make a Ouija board. It doesn't matter if we made the concrete and chalk if the intention is to contact evil from the start, then contact may may be made by sheer will. That's deep. Oh, that's the end of it right there. 
So I don't know. That's interesting. And the dream things at the end there where he said he has nightmares of an old demon lady, that just could be pressed in your brain. You know, if this all, you experience all this with your girlfriend and then she's talking about this demon lady, I could see how you would dream about that just because that was pretty scary. But it's kind of weird how it's written. It's like, Ashley wanted to be friends again, which did end up happening for a short while. I don't understand that. Then after this, it did seem things fell apart very slowly. We stopped dating. People died in her family and mine. That was just kind of thrown out there. Like, I mean, people well, die, but is yeah. he implying that it's connected to this? Was it dying in strange ways? Is it like the omen kind of no, or- people are dying like that creepy way? Yeah, or is it that your grandmother had cancer and died? Those those things can happen. The other thing about this one that I don't understand is the baptized again. You don't just go get baptized because there's some, I don't know, girl that's acting weird or something. You had weird dreams or something. Well, and if you're Catholic. Honestly, you really technically should just have one baptism. For the remission of sins. I don't understand this, like just running out and getting baptized again. Well, and could you? Does your priest even allow you to be baptized again? Well, he shouldn't. That's that's why I'm confused over that. And it sounded like it was just like, well, I'm going to go get baptized to get rid of these demons or something. And I don't think that's the way that works. No, I think you'd need your priest involved. Well, and, and they then, talk like it, I guess, was going to get baptized alluded to the fact that it was happening at church. But that just struck me as odd because you, you're you t- supposed to just be baptized once. And, you know, is it Ashley just messing with him? Mm-hmm. Was there really a Ouija board? Was there really contact made with somebody? Or is Ashley just effing with everybody? And Ashley's like, oh, here's what I did. I'm so sorry. Let's be friends again. And then you said yes, for whatever reason. I think after that, I'd be like, oh, hell no. Right. But so it could just be Ashley talking shit. Yeah. I don't know. That's a weird story to me. And and I I don't know. Have you ever had like dreams where you something is happening in your dreams it and you're dreaming it but it's actually really happening like your phone and your like your phone's ringing oh, yeah. but in your dream the you have a phone ringing yeah and then you wake up and realize no your phone is really ringing right yes okay so in your dream you have some reason to explain why there's blood all over your face and it's the grim reaper in your dream right but you wake up and you've actually had a bloody nose yeah yeah, I don't. I think that dream was just a dream. That's what I'm thinking. And I too. think the other one too could just be a dream. Because if Ashley really did tell her this, and they're just some mean girls when you're in high school, and Ooh, so mean. And but it puts the thought in your head. So I could mm-hmm. see you having dreams about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it the demon entity? I don't know that, but I could definitely see you dreaming about it. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that with we have a lot like, of... You know what they say with friends friends like Ashley? Who needs friends? Yeah. Who needs... Yeah. Who needs, yeah, who, who needs you don't even all? need friends. It's like yeah. you're better off going through this world alone. <laughs> <laughs> My God. With friends like Ashley, I'm moving to a different state. Well, and, you know, sometimes on this show, to me, some of the really scariest things aren't paranormal. They're it's the, the Ashley people treat each other, <laughs> right? You know that can happen. You, I'm, and somebody will say this or that, and I'm thinking, gosh, yeah, but it's the what that person did to you, <laughs> like. And the same thing here with this Ashley. I'm not sure that it's as paranormal as she's just a mean because person. Because I almost, I think she's a mean person, and I think she's probably a little psychotic, and. Mm-hmm. Although a lot of hormonal teenage girls can come across as somewhat psychotic. You and I both were, we went through that phase. And, you know, it's like, 
for Ashley to have the power to summon some colonial era witch and get her to do her bidding one night is pretty remarkable. And I'm not even I I am not even a huge fan of somebody casting this colonial era witch thing. I think so many right. women were accused of this and that were not witches. So I'm a little bit disappointed that that even came up in this story mm-hmm. because I you know women perfectly innocent women were killed. Exactly. Or, you know, hung or burned alive. And I just think it's horrible. And I and I so I'm not even sure how much I believe in colonial witches, if you yeah. want to know the truth. I'm, I'm with you on that. So I don't know. I kind of, here's my thoughts. I kind of think Ashley is full of shit. I do too. I do. I now, think she put the all weird, that out now there. I, okay, now the weird thing is him getting that I'm burning text. And it never yeah. came. And he got it from his girlfriend, but it wasn't on her phone. And that is weird. That's weird. I cannot explain that. Yeah, I think that one was pretty weird. But she had a dream that she was burning. Could she have been picking up her phone and typing that over and texting that over and over and over and over? Yeah, because I think that was prior to voice and deleted and then deleted it off of her phone. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Could she have done something weird just to mess with him and then acted like? No, see, it's not on my phone. Yeah. I know. Weird story. So here's Mm. another one. It says, my name is Andrea. I am from Salt Lake City, Utah. I have many stories I can tell spanning from comforting experiences to dark ones, as well as a smart-ass spirit that used to tease my friends and family. But the one I've decided to tell you for my first time writing in is really two stories I always tell because they tangle together and leave everyone thinking. Like a story that leaves us thinking. I know. First off, just a little background. I come from a long line of gifted folks on my mom's side of the family, going back as far as we know it. My great-great-great-grandmother Lottie was the most in tune with her gift, I would say. Along with her daughter, my great-grandmother It should be your great-great-grandmother. Well, anyway, there's lots of greats involved here. Uh, Joyce. So great-great-something, grandmother Lottie, then her daughter is Joyce. They would communicate with spirits regularly, usually with Ouija boards and things of that nature, and passed the knowledge down the line. I myself am an empath. I don't try to communicate with spirits like my grandmothers did, I just know when they are there and I feel their emotions and I don't go any further than that. Anyway, on to my stories. My grandma Lottie and my mom were very close and before she passed away, Lottie gave my mom a Cabbage Patch doll and told her to take care of it so she can give it to her daughter when she comes along. My mom, being 19 at the time, didn't think much about it because, you know, grandmas. It wasn't too long after that that she'd passed away. This info ties in later. Fast forward to about five years after that, my mom was about 24 and was out at the bar with her friends when she met a man. She went home that night and told my grandmother, I just met the man I'm going to marry, and sure enough, she had. About four months later, my mother was pregnant with me, and nine months after I was born, they got married. FYI, my parents will soon be celebrating their 23rd anniversary so bar meetups do work occasionally. <laughs> Once in a while. Well, it can happen. When I was about two years old, my mom had put me down for my nap and decided she wanted to redecorate the living room a bit and had a couple of her pictures she wanted to put around. One was of my grandma Lottie. Side note, I don't remember any of the following conversation. After I was done with my nap, I came walking into the living room and stopped dead seeing the picture of Lottie. I turned to my mom and said, hey, I know her. My mom came over to see what picture I was looking at and knowing that I had never seen this picture before told me, no, you don't, sweetie. She died before you were born. I replied with, yes, I do, mommy. I met her before I was in your belly. 
Needless to say, this gave my mom chills and does me too when I think about it. A few years after that, I think when I was about 11 and we were moving. As we were packing up the living room, my mom had my dad climb up a stepladder to get the tchotchkes off the top shelf, which included the Cabbage Patch doll Lottie had given my mom. My dad picked it up and was handing it down to my mom when something slid out of the bottom of the box. My mom reached down and picked up a white envelope, read the front, and quickly pulled out the red card inside. She started to tear up and had to sit down. I went over to ask her what was wrong while my dad was reading the card. As he handed the card to my mom, I remember him asking, are you sure it's not Joyce's handwriting or your mom's? She was shaking her head and told my dad that she knew the difference, and this was definitely Lottie's handwriting. By this time, I was squirming in my seat wanting to know what was going on. My mom asked me if I remembered who had given her the doll, and when I said I did, she handed me the card and told me to read it. On the envelope, it read, Andy. Now I should tell you that I absolutely hate being called Andy, and the only person to get away with it was my mom, was my mom Joyce. Or grandmother Joyce? I'm confused with all the people, but... <laughs> so, she, so Joyce could call her Andy. I remember reading the letter and feeling so much love, but I don't remember exactly what it said, and after two moves, I don't know where it has ended up. Honestly, I kind of forgot about it till recently, so I'll have to search for it. I always felt like I had a special connection to my grandma Lottie, and that card only confirmed my feelings and confused the hell out of my brain at the same time. What do you guys think? Thanks for giving me your time and reading my story. I have more of them to share. Love the show. I find myself laughing out loud at work and look around to see if everyone is staring at me like I'm a psycho. I love it. Well, we're all little psychos, so I'll give her that. So I'd love to know what the card actually said, but I well, yeah, think I was waiting for what the card said, but maybe it just had her name on it. No, I think there was a message in the card because it was. Um, so it had to envelope. be. Yeah, because I was looking. Because she said she read the front, quickly pulled out the red card inside, started to tear up and had to sit down. It could have just been a kind of thinking of you type of card. But I will say this. So our mother, our grandmother, our great-grandmother, Donna, Mildred, and Urilla in that order. Right. If you were to give us three letters that they wrote I, without, I would know 100% who wrote what. I recognize oh, yeah. their handwriting. Oh, yeah. And yeah. So that would be really weird if the Cabbage Patch doll that she gave to Andrea's mother had a card with it that said Andy, because that would have been before Andy was even born. Right. And when the dad is like, are you sure that's Lottie's handwriting? And the mom's like, it is. And that I can relate to, because I can, our great-grandmother, I can recognize her handwriting. Yep. Right now, if I saw it, I would go, oh my God, that's... Great yeah. grandma's handwriting. And I know my grandma's handwriting. Mm hmm So yeah. I don't know. It's kind of interesting because it makes me think that note in that card was for Andrea. Yeah. Like, as she said, give this to your daughter. And she was years away from being pregnant. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's a really oh, cool story. Oh, I think it's a good story. Yeah. And the fact that they were all empaths and... Mm -hmm. Right. She came had, from along with... And she said, yeah, that they actually did do some contacting, right? Yeah. I just think that is really... I just think that's really interesting because you definitely know... You know the handwriting. Mm -hmm. Now I just wish I know what that the card said. <laughs> so well, if, yeah. I if would, you I find would love the card, to know that. please let us know. And I do know that feeling when you see something from someone that's passed and it is in their writing, I had it happen one time, you know, a few years after my dad died that I was going through some stuff and something fell out and I picked it up and it, it was just this note. And it said, uh, you know, like, I love you and miss you so much, dad. And I was like, ah. 
oh my God. Like, and I'm just sobbing, but just seeing the handwriting and knowing that there was this little message. And I felt like that was exactly a message from him that day. Yeah. And that yeah. particular message to see. Yeah. And, and then to, like so, this one to have a red card fall out, like maybe it sounds like it was in the bottom of the box. Maybe I don't think she ever realized it was even there. Oh, yeah. Well, she just took it, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm 19. I don't want a cabbage patch at all. I'll give it to my kid, you know, and put it away. Right. Like, I'm never going to have kids, Grandma. Yeah. Well, surprise. Grandma yeah. knew. <laughs> well, if you have a real ghost story, share it with us. You can call it in 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You can become a premium subscriber. You can listen without the commercials. You'll get advanced episodes. You have access to the archive. Do that through Apple Podcasts, or you can sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening. <laughs>